Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Tech, and today I've got a special episode for you. You know, a lot of us around the world are kind of in lockdown right now and maybe in quarantine or something, and I just wanted to show you one of my other hobbies that I definitely have been working on. I made a post about it a couple of days ago, and that would be gardening. That's right, I do some gardening in my suburban neighborhood, so I thought maybe it would be beneficial to some of you in case maybe you have some kids or you live in a uh, neighborhood similar to mine or you just have a small area of land, and I could show you some ways to get started so that you can not only have a, a little bit of food for yourself and your family or maybe someone that you care about, you could give them some food, or you also have something that would be worth something to, to trade and uh, even to sell possibly down the road. So um, all those are very important, especially in the time that we're going through right now. So I'm just going to drop myself out of the picture real quick, and I'm going to start off by showing you uh, kind of around my front yard. So this is my yard. Look, I know it looks terrible. It's, you know, the mulch is gone in the front, and that all needs to be redone. But I haven't taken care of those beds yet. This was literally the first time I gotten out for the season and gotten any kind of yard work done. It's the first time I've cut my grass. Uh, first thing to notice, this is just the front of my small house. And then I've got a tree right here that will block the view from the street pretty much of my garden that I'm going to eventually show you. But just if you look at this tree real quickly, it did split in half a couple years ago during a windstorm. I walked outside and it literally split right in half while I was standing there looking at it. And uh, But the other half is still good. So this is my garden back here in this spot. This is, uh, you can see I don't have a lot of room between myself and the neighbors, but I still have enough room to build this small four by eight uh, lifted bed garden. And it's very relaxing, but it also is a good chance, you know, to get outdoors and, um, you know, get into nature a little bit. And uh, so here's what I've got planted for this year. First, I've got a couple of different types of strawberries here. I know, normally don't do berries, but I'll be honest with you, the store was completely out of stuff I normally do. This is also something new for me. I'm trying to grow some eggplants here. So we'll see how that goes. And then down here, I've got my caged tomatoes, and these should do really well. Uh, there are two things that I've learned to grow really well, and those are tomatoes and okra. Now, unfortunately, the store only had tomatoes and the eggplant and some herbs and other things I did not need this year. So I'm going to have to resort to doing some seeds and some other things. I've also got some other things coming up, but that's all just in case, you know, I will be taking some and documenting some of that in case people actually like this video and want to see more. Now, the last thing I've got here are some baby beets that are better than shroots. I thought that was pretty funny. So I tried some beets, but most likely some of these smaller plants like uh, will either if they they'll either spread really well or I'll be transplanting them out and um, I will expand and add some okra and other things once those seeds germate. Now, I thought I'd go through here because I did find these old photos and show you the construction and design of this. Now, I built this bed about four years ago, and I went into uh, my backyard here, and I cut down with a shovel, just tried to make it because it is on a slope. You can tell up here that it's on a slope, a hill, and I wanted to have it not, you know, I wanted the bed to kind of look flat even though it was going to be kind of deeper looking on some spots. I didn't want it to just be floating on top of the uh, ground and look like it was going to just slide down the hill pretty much, if you know what I mean. But what I had to do was I had to cut these. It took three of these four by eight, you know, treated uh, big 12 inch. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, no, they're, they're, those boards, they had to be cut and then, I did have one two by four that I cut in half and I braced in the center. And you'll notice I have a white lining in here that I did uh, buy and I, I put it in there so I could control anything that I put in there. And then I refilled it with some of the topsoil up, you know, till about the height of the bed. 
where those beams are holding it together. But that makes it very sturdy, so the you know the sides won't blow out. You've got extra cross beams here to help with um, with that. And then I filled it with you know high quality topsoil. So doing it like this, you have complete control over what goes in there. Now this was my first year. And I'll just show it to you just so you can kind of learn what I did. I really overpacked the thing. And a lot of these plants that you see in here right now did not grow out. Now, we'll show you something. This down here, this is my rosemary plant that I originally grew. And you'll see it at the end of this video. It's the one bush that's still alive to this day. It survives the winter and has stayed in this bed since then. But everything else, I had the tomatoes down here, and I had some other things spread out here. This was okra in the middle, and I tried some peppers and some other herbs around the outside, which was not a bad idea either if you want to grow herbs around the outside. But I just had too much packed in and really limited some of the growth in here. So, you know, you can't get too uh, overpacked because you'll also eventually the gardens will be running out of, si uh, out of sunlight. So this was... Week four. I'm sorry you can't see that um, text right there, but this is the fourth week, and you're already seeing some pretty good growth here. These were the okra plants, and this would be, you know, 2019. So this was actually last year, my crops. So this is by the fourth week of them being in there. So there again is the okra. This was some other things I tried that did not come out, like melons. Um, those eventually just did not survive. And then, of course, tomatoes. And these tomatoes, you know, after you have them in the ground and they get sunshine, especially in my area of Tennessee, you're going to get plenty of uh, growth really quickly. Even this is just two weeks after what you saw right there. So I saw a little friend out here. And he, of course, was hanging around this garden. So there's that bush. You can see a giant rosemary bush. But again, this is starting to grow out really well. You want to have everything have some good chance to get sunlight because the okra will sprout up quickly. The tomatoes will sprout up quickly. The other thing I had back there was some squash. I wouldn't recommend it. It takes up a lot of space. You just want to find you know, what you can grow that you can grow a lot of, depending on you know how many people you have to feed. I have a family of four. And they really like things like tomatoes and okra. And I can trade and sell tomatoes and okra. And I could go into that later about the economics of becoming a legitimate farmer. Because I've used this bed over the last four years to actually uh, have a farm business running. And uh, according to the USDA, you know, I'm technically um, a farmer. And I could go into economics of why that's important later on. But... Just for today, you know, this is just some of the growth you'll see on on these tomatoes. You've already got a nice sized tomato there, and then you know, ten weeks after planting, you could expect some pretty big explosion here of um, plants. These okra plants will grow and grow, and you'll have some you know great little encounters with nature when you go out, even if it's just bugs. And the herbs come out, and then the tomatoes. These were some heirloom tomatoes. And you could tell that you're going to get, you know, when these are ripe and ready to come off, you'll get a half a dozen tomatoes ready to go. Now, every day you could come out here and get a three or four to five pieces of okra, and then, you know, a handful of tomatoes at least every day which would be the cherry tomatoes. But it's really relaxing. And again, I feel like it's something that's important. You know, if you're thinking about something you could do while we're all stuck at home, even if you have just a small backyard or, you know, a side yard like me, these tomatoes really come in. And these things, you know, yellow tomatoes like this are quite expensive if you go to the store. So is the okra. So I know we're going to have troubles getting a lot of good fresh vegetables most likely in this year. It's just an unfortunate truth about what's happening right now. So that's kind of the end of what I had to talk about there. 
I really appreciate you guys, you know, hanging out with me and just looking at the garden. Now, I do have other projects going on around my small house with this garden. And if things continue to go the way I think they're going, I'm just going to make more and more and more um, improvements to the garden. Like I said, I'm going to do some seeds because there weren't a lot of vegetables available even at the store, but there were still plenty of seeds. And so I'll show you, I could go show through that stuff too. But if you like the video, you know, leave it a thumbs up, leave me a comment. And occasionally I'll come back and, you know, update you on this and show you these things. Cause I feel like if I can just maybe get one person even to, to consider, or, you know, finally take the leap of going in and jumping into a garden, uh, then, you know, just like CRTs, it'll be a, uh, very much a, a positive part of your life and it does yield rewards and those are the best type of hobbies to have it's something actually produce and give you something so anyway thank you again for watching i'll see you guys next time with some more real retro tech content i'm sure we'll be jumping right back into a crt next time but just again let me know what you thought of this episode i really appreciate it see you next time